Hi, it's Darren from Zagami's. I'm going to show you how to create simple, healthy and affordable meals that you can prepare for the whole family. Okay, so we've got some fresh barramundi here today and we're going to prepare barramundi niswa. It's been a dish that we've had on our venues for the last couple of months and it's been an absolute hit. So I'm going to prepare it and fill it for you guys and show you how to do it. So first things first, we've got our fresh barramundi here. Obviously look for how fresh it is. I mean the eyes are nice and glistening and bright. I've had it gutted and like I said before, scaled already. When I'm filleting barramundi, I keep it pretty simple. I always think of three cuts. Cut by the gill, cut by the uh, back of the tail here, and then straight along the backbone. So without further ado, let's get it started. First things first, shing, sharp knife. Can't go wrong and very really important. Give it a skill and we're good to go. So, like I said before, three cuts. First cut, straight down where the gills are and straight off the back. Then down here by the tail, same again. And they're basically just guidelines for me. At the back here, underneath as well, I always make another little incision. So basically it's my guideline. Now I've also got a tea towel here, which creates non-slip for me, which will be obviously for safety. I don't want to slip and cut myself. Right, secondly, so I've made my incisions, one, two and three. Then lastly, down the backbone, I will just follow the knife all the way along. And then with the back of my thumb, I shall follow it along and to make sure that it's a nice clean cut, which it is. And just straight off. And you can, as you follow, you can see where the backbone is and you can see where your bones are. Turn my knife around and follow it back. And then I'm gonna, going to hit the rib cage. Now, once I've got that part there done, this is where my little incisions come into play. So, straight off, over the backbone, straight back down, and then that other little incision there, like I said before, comes straight off, Bob's your uncle. So, and now the next part, the last part, is the rib cage. Now, with your knife, tip of the knife, quite strong, and off she comes, and follow down the rib cage. And there you go, nice barramundi fillet, nice and clean, good to go. Okay, now we're going to uh, portion this baby. Right, so just a little bit of rib cage. I'm going to take it off, nice and smooth, nice and quick. Just following it down. Keep a little of the uh, bit of the belly there because I don't want to waste it. And then we've got it. Now, bear money, no bones down the middle. And now I'm just going to portion her up. So we've got our beautiful, such a beautiful piece of fish. I'm going to cut the six, six beautiful little darns they call it, and then. With our tail, I call it the two-piece feed, and it'll, that won't curl up when we cook it. Now you can, if you want, a little bit of an incision there as you go, a little bit of presentation, and that's us. Okay, next stage of the process, guys, we're going to put together anchovy mayonnaise, which I believe is the star of the show, brings it all together. So I've got some anchovies here. To serve six is what we're serving. I'm going to do about four or five. I, I like anchovies, so more the merrier. So I've got about four in there anchovies, which I've got in my trusty mortar and pestle. One garlic clove, you can put two in there if you want. And all I do is just smash it together. So what I'm doing is, I'm just making myself a paste. Grab a little bit of salt in there as well, just a touch, and that'll break down your garlic. Obviously the anchovies are quite salty, so be careful. So if you don't have a mortar and pestle at home, grab your knife, back of the knife, and just press it with a little bit of salt, it'll do exactly the same job. So, I've got my mayonnaise. And all I'm going to do is just add for six and three heaps spoons. It'll be more than enough. And then just bring it all together. Keep it chunky, you know. Smells great. And if you're not a fan of anchovies, leave them out. And she is good to go. Right, let's crisp this barramundi up. First things first, I've got a nice hot skillet ready to go. Barramundi's all set. I'm going to season it lightly with some molten sea salt, cracked pepper, and you want to make sure you've got a nice medium, medium to high heat, very important because we don't want the fish to stick. Right, then we're going to cook that for about four minutes on one side. I've regulated the heat. I'm going to turn it down just a touch because I don't want it to be too high because my, my skin will burn. We don't want to have that. So we're just going to cook it nice and slowly on a moderate heat. Okay, and as you can see, it's really coming together. I'll just have a little bit of a look. 
I'll just give it, yep, yeah, beautiful. It's coming up really nicely, nice and golden brown. Once we've got the nice skin nicely coloured, quick turn. And now I'm gonna finish it up with some butter and some fresh parsley. Great. So we've turned it, it's it's cooked just nearly, just nearly cooked through. And yeah, now you can hear that like it's spitting back at me, but it's like it's gonna crisp up and it's gonna give you a real nice texture break for later on when you see it on the plate. Right, I'm gonna grab my tongs nice and gentle, take it off straight onto baking paper. And now let's go put the dish together. Let's put together firstly our anchovy mayo that we made before. And I'm just gonna straight out, straight onto the plate, nice little pile there. And I'm just gonna smear it down. I can add some more later, but that's our base. Secondly, we're gonna add our fish. Now I use my hands, pristine clean, so I make sure that obviously, I could use tongs and so forth, but I wanna get in amongst it. So, grab my fish, and I'm just gonna put it sort of all over the shop. I'm gonna leave the, the old two-piece feed for later for a little bit of garnish at the end. And now we're gonna put together our salad. So I've got some tomatoes, got some green beans, which I've just lightly blanched, straight in. And I've got some Kipler potatoes, beautiful young Kiplers. I'm just gonna break them up. All these flavors are gonna to come together nicely. Okay, so I've got some roasted red capsicum as well. I've barbecued the capsicum, covered it with some Glad Wrap, and it'll make it easier for the skin to come off from the flesh. And it just gives it a really nice, smoky flavor. So, I've got the capsicum, and I'm just gonna rip it up. It's a real rustic style dish. It looks really, really good. Gonna season with some mold and sea salt. Bit of cracked pepper. Some fresh lemon. Just watch for the seeds. Mix it around. Then I've got some nice extra virgin olive oil. Just a little bit in there. And like I say, this is all just for taste. Then I've got some fresh basil. I'll put a little bit more fresh parsley in there as well. And there is our base of our salad. Okay, at this stage, once again, I'm getting my hands involved. And I'm painting the picture, it's like a mosaic. Right, a little bit of dressing there as well, that goes straight on, and the top, don't waste anything. And then I've got some soft boiled eggs, five minutes in boiling water. I'm just gonna crack them by, by hand, and look at that, they're just lush. Some olives, kalamata olives, you can use green. I like the kalamata, nice tang to them. A two piece feed, just put a little bit of garnish on top. Okay, and there you have it, Barramundi Niswa, enough for the whole family. Beautiful. So if you want to give the barrow a go, download the recipe on our website, or for a direct link, please see the comment section below. I'd love to hear feedback, so send me a comment. Thanks for watching guys, see you next time. Everybody loves, everybody loves, everybody loves a guy.